Hey guys, what's going on? A1 Groundwalker here, and it's my first video, video, back on YouTube. I am so stoked about this. I couldn't have thought of a better project to be my first video. Hopefully this will be really fun for you guys. Shout out to Michael Wisman for recommending me doing a video on it because that's why I'm doing it. My plan and my project I'm gonna be doing is making a custom out of the Boba Fett model kit. Um, as you guys know, this this Boba Fett here, I'll grab my Boba Fett real quick. It's very similar in color and scheme to a Black Series Boba Fett. Um, actually, that's a complete lie. It has the colors of Boba Fett. That's what I meant to say. So it's got, it, you know, the colors are green, yellow. It's just a Boba Fett that you need to detail. Well, I had the idea, and shout out to John Walker Customs. He also does this quite a bit um, for just like different looks of Boba. He makes these model kits and paints them for like vintage looks and sells them to people. After watching The Mandalorian, I really wanted to create my own Mandalorian figure. Um, not of Din Djarin, but of a custom Mandalorian. Um, obviously there's thousands of Mandalorians spread out across the universe because of the Great Purge and other events in um, the Mandalorian kind of history that separated them. Um, some are bounty hunters, some are warriors, some are soldiers, some are trying to regain control of Mandalore. There's a ton of story here. And so I thought, which I still do think, that this figure is going to be a great base because I think I can take it apart and piece it out and hopefully um, paint each piece individually and then build it together. Um, I've never made a custom action figure. I've never even worked with like model paints or an I've worked with an airbrush, I guess, on my props, but that's it. So this is really going to be an interesting project to try out and see how it goes. Am I nervous? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is my first custom. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, there's a couple aspects of it I don't know if I'm going to be able to do. Like, I'm planning on doing some cloth stuff. I have some pieces from, like, other figures that I'm planning on using and kit bashing and stuff. So it's going to be a very interesting process. Um... For those of you who don't know how model kit works, I'll go over it real quickly, but it basically comes in these pieces. I'll showcase this one, real, or, okay, there we go. It comes in these type of pieces, and you basically break apart the pieces you want and build it. Um, so you break it apart, you sand it, clean it, make sure it's all smooth, and you build like even the holster, like the joints for the figure, everything comes separated. So that's how you're supposed to build it. Um, separated and then you obviously build it as you go and so obviously again here's like he, he would normally look like this this model kit like the yellows and stuff but he, the plastic is like a brighter because you have to kind of paint it to get it to look like the movie so luckily there's going to be minimal sanding because he already comes with just again normally how a finished figure works i'll go i'll use this for an example it's the molded plastic so like the plastic like this leather belt for example that's not painted. Basically the idea process up until now and what we've done is I Googled, I literally Googled custom Mandalorian or Mandalorian custom art, uh, concept art, concept art, Mandalorian co concept art, hoping I'd find either pictures from like the Mandalorian book when John Favreau, Dave Filoni, all of the other artists behind that team were kind of concepting uh, Din Djarin's look and they came up with some other ideas. I was hoping I'd find those or just some people from the community who, you know, drew up some cool Mandalorian designs. I found two. I narrowed it down to one that I thought would be a little easier for my first one. Um, as you can see here, shout out to this guy's artist name. I forget what it's um, called off the top of my head right now while I'm talking about it, but you can read it right here. It's a really cool look. I'm calling it the Crimson Mando um, for right now. That's kind of what I'm calling it, but I'm gonna need to figure out a better name for it. Um, we'll see, I'll have to consult my, my friends for that one. But anyway, this is a really cool design to me. Um, it's got dark red, it's got white, it's got like the best car silver. Um, it's got a couple other accent colors, the dark blue undersuit. I think this will look really good and I think it's different enough from Boba Fett that it will easily be like a custom figure. You know, it's not gonna look like a different colored Boba Fett, if that makes sense, it'll definitely be different. And I've been able to part out the pieces I need. I'm doing the belt from the Django Black Series figure, um, the guns from just two Star Wars pistols I had in my Star Wars bag that aren't super important. The rifle is a Stormtrooper model kit rifle with two scopes added onto it from other guns I cut off. Um, one's Chewbacca's bowcaster, the other just came stock on it, but I switched the positioning on it. And the sword is one of the swords from the Thor Ragnarok Marvel Legends movie figure. 
um, that I'm gonna paint. And then I have a little holster for it as well. So yeah, that's everything pieced out. And then I have the model kit itself, um, which I'm gonna paint up and stuff. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. We'll see how the project goes. I also am planning on 3D printing the thigh pieces for him. So I'm gonna 3D print those and see how that turns out. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be 3D printing. We're gonna be painting him up and separating him. We're gonna be doing some kit bashing of other props. It's gonna be kind of, besides sculpting, it's gonna be the whole like custom action for your wheelhouse. So I'm super excited to get into it. Um, and the supplies, the supplies you will need if you want to do this kind of thing, or that I'm just using. A ruler, I'm going to be using a ruler a lot, specifically for measurements on the 3D printer um, to get that pretty accurate. That's the main thing. Um, paint, paint is a huge thing in this hobby. Paint's a huge thing when it comes to um, model kits and, and action figures and stuff like that. So the paint I choose to use, or I uh, bought for this project, are Vallejo paints. Um, Vallejo is a really good paint for model kits or model, you know, anything, mainly action figures, um, miniatures, stuff like that, even props technically. Now for my props, I tend to use the cheaper paints like Apple Barrel and Craftsmart. Um, I'll show you what those look like right now, real quick, just so you have a, you can see the difference. This is a Craftsmart paint. This is for dioramas and props. This is cheaper, like a couple cents per thing, you know? So way cheaper um, and easier to use and you know you can buy where that's gonna run you $5 a bottle, which is super expensive, but it'll look so much better on custom figures, hold up so much better, etc. So paint, paint brushes, and an airbrush, which at some point during this video, I will have an in-depth look at. But an airbrush is a key thing for me because you don't get the brush strokes of actually doing it yourself. So that's what I need. I got the Boba Fed model kit, put it together, then everything else will kind of follow pace after that um, of sanding and washing and dremeling and piece, pe building everything, kind of piecing it out and getting it ready for paint. So this is a whole new process to me. I am completely in the dark. Luckily, I have consulted very good friends of mine, 796 Studios, Art With Toys, talked to Action Figure Toronto. Um, it's probably at least one or two people I'm forgetting off. Oh, Centerpoint Customs. Anyway, I've talked to people. I am pretty confident in my abilities as of this point from big doing dioramas and props that I can tackle this. How good? Well, you guys are about to find out. Well, let's get started. All right, guys, just want to share this with you guys. This is the weapons for the uh, Crimson Mando, as I'm calling him. So he has this blade, um, which will be obviously be repainted. I'm using this from a Marvel Legends Thor, um, which is pretty sick. I'm just going off the picture, by the way. It's got dual pistols. Um, so this is the one that's kind of shown. This is the one that's in the holster. So both of these work. And he's got a big rifle. I'm gonna put one of these scopes on uh, up here and then this piece up here probably because that's kind of what the blaster looks like. And then these three blasters, I'm gonna modify a little bit, but these will also be ones that aren't in the image and I think will look good on him. So I'm gonna use those. And then the last step that I just found that I'm super stoked about is I was wondering how I was gonna get double thigh hol holsters that kind of look good. And I forgot I have the Black Series Jango Fett, horrible figure, looks like crap too. And this is a loose knot sculpted on uh, like these pockets here and the holster. So I'm gonna cut these um, pieces of the thigh and I'm gonna transform this into holsters for the pistol. And this is an accurate belt to the picture as well. So super stoked about that. And this jet pack is also used for the other Mando and the other picture, not the Crimson Mando. So I'll be able to salvage this and use it later on. And then I'm gonna end up buying the newer Black Series Jango's Fett. So I still have a Jango Fett, but I'm gonna probably use this for the custom. All right, guys, so we're taking a look at the table here before we start uh, doing some washing of soap and water, a little bit of sanding and uh, masking. This is all of the pieces of the model kit kind of uh, spaced out to how they should be. Um, and I'll go into kind of what's going on here. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. So I obviously you heard I built the model kit, but I pieced it out. Um, and I pieced it out while I was doing so in these sections. Um, obviously each piece has gone certain undergo changes and, and stuff like that, but this is all the pieces and obviously the colors that are with them are their corresponding base coats, essentially. Essentially is the keyword there. So there are some things missing um, on this table that are over here, which we'll talk about briefly in a second, but this is just what we're doing first is all these pieces. So let's go into it. We have 
this cardboard piece, um, the only reason really this is on cardboard and not on the mat is because I have it sticky tacked to this, so it's gonna be easier to paint um, straight on and it won't fall off and will be, you know, I won't have to hold it in my hand and stuff like that, which will be nice. So that's there. Um, these are the armor pieces. This is everything that's gonna be painted in a Beskar steel color. Um, obviously we have our glossy black Vallejo for our base coat so that um, when you apply the silver and natural steel and all that, that it really uh, shines and actually looks like it's, you know, silver. Um, I have silver and natural steel here. I don't know which I'm gonna use yet. I'm gonna open the bottles and I'll see which one looks better, but it looks like in the artwork I'm basing this off of, it's a little bit more of a darker Beskar type of tone. So I think I'm gonna go with the natural steel, but I have the silver just in case. Um, so that's gonna be all of these pieces. That will be all of their base coats. Some of them that will be their final coats, obviously with some dry brushing and, and washes and stuff like that going on with it. However, some of them that will not be. For example, the helmet has a couple red lines on it. Um, the jetpack is like kind of red, but has a lot of scrapes of silver on the bottom. So we're starting with that silver base coat to do that. Um, these are two uh, 3D printed best car thigh plates by me. I got them off Thingiverse um, for free. Um, I just looked up Mandalorian uh, Beskar thigh plate, I think is, is all I looked up and I was able to find this. Uh, did quite a bit of sanding and filler primer and sanding and filler primer and I'm worried if I do any more filler primer, it's gonna destroy like the middle line here, which I've already had to kind of, kind of sand to get to show. So I'm not doing any more filler primer. All that's left is this, uh, the aluminum kind of silverish look and hopefully it will be fine. Again, this was printed on filament, so I'm not expecting it to look perfect, um, especially because this is gonna be underneath the cloth that will be on this figure, so I'm not too pressed about it, but it is something that was uh, on my mind. So anyway, I dremeled quite a bit on the back, so it, you know, cause I couldn't get the supports off for whatever reason, cause it was so small um, with pliers, so I just dremeled them off. Then I used a hot air gun, um, a heat gun to bend it into shape on the thigh which we'll talk about when we get over here. So these are the best car thigh plates, obviously getting that silver color as well. And um, the helmet kind of piece, the helmet's pieced up and you'll see why if you look at the artwork, um, it's because over here, which we'll talk about, those are gonna be white. This is gonna be silver with some red on it. So I had to differentiate them um, and then build it and there won't be any lines. Instead of masking and doing the helmet all as one piece. The pieces over here, now these actually are gonna get the silver base coat, but these are mainly painted in red. There's little scratches on them, but they're mainly red. So that's why I have them next to the flat red right here that I'm gonna be using. Um, also talking about the silver, which I forgot, are these weapons. Um, they're all gonna get silver base coats and then I'll go in with different colors to give them um, a little bit more of a realistic feel and kind of like the artwork. Obviously you can see I've already uh, masked off with Silly Putty, the sword. So this will be um, completely uh, the silver color we need it to be. Um, I'm trying to push this down. There we go. So we get all of the blade. I've already sanded this a little bit as well. So hopefully the paint will go on pretty well. Um, obviously it's gonna need a primer, but yeah. Um, might have to heat gun actually fix this before or after, I don't know which. Um, but anyway, here's the sword he's gonna be using. Um, we have his blaster I made from um, some pieces and his two hand pistols, all again, getting that silver tone. So that's why they're all over here. Next, obviously we have the white. This is gonna be the pieces of the helmet that will be done in full white. Um, very simple, obviously we'll get primed and then white. I'm gonna have to mask off inside the visor there because the visor is a separate piece that's over there, which I will probably not paint because it's already gloss black. I might do a gloss black hand paint just in case it's not perfectly gloss black like I wanted to, but we'll see. Next we have his uh, chest piece. If you know anything about Mandalorians or that, that, that's stupid. If you know anything about Jango Fett or Boba Fett, they have this undershirt on top of this gray suit that they wear. Um, in the artwork, it's actually a different color. The suit in the artwork is like a, a bluish color. This is black. So I'm gonna be doing this black as well as the neck black because it's all this obviously slightly different colored piece. Um, anything this color would get that black. This is the gray, so this is all fine. Um, anyway, so this is getting the black and then so are these little uh, shoulder pieces. These aren't in the artwork um, that I'm using, but it helps hide a joint on the model kit. And I don't know if I can attach these uh, shoulder pieces without it. So I'm gonna be using it um, and take a liberty with that. And this will get the flat black. Next, we have this Lieutenant Unit World War II blue. Um, this is gonna be the undercoat. I might darken it with a little bit of black. We'll see um, how it looks, but this is gonna be the uh, piece for all of this. This will obviously be silver. We'll come back to this, um, we'll mask this off. But for now, I mean, you're not gonna be able to see it anyway because of the belt and the cloth goods, but I still wanna paint it the true color. Um, but anyway, the rest of this will get this uh, bluish kind of tone. So talking about this, obviously, cause you're like, what the, what's going on here? 
I uh, there were sculpted pockets on here and in the artwork they are actually removed and he has Beskar thigh plates which are over there um at first i didn't know if i was going to do it because i don't have a resin 3d printer i can't sculpt all that well so, um i only have a filament and i was like i filament will show too much lines which it does a little bit um but after talking to some of my friends they convinced me why not try it so i decided to print and then after filler priming sanding filler priming sanding and by the way filler priming is just a type of spray where it's very sandable and it fills lines of 3d prints or fills lines of anything so after hitting it with a couple coats of that and sanding i got it to a decent point where i think it'll work fine so after that, I decided to cut off the pockets. I don't have any milliput or anything, so I'm not sculpting. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much because I'm covering them anyway with the Beskar, but if I wasn't, I would definitely want to sculpt into these holes and try to fill it and make it smooth. Um, but since I'm not, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. So I did that, um, try to sand it to a flat uh, point where it's pretty easy to put the plates on. They were a little too straight for my liking, so I took the hair dryer. I heated them up for probably one whole minute on low, um, just by really close to it, and then I bent them around the plastic um, so they fit way more snugly, um, which worked out pretty well. So that's all the pieces over here. Um, I'll talk real quick about um, these two things, and then we'll go into the pieces that aren't over here um, that won't be getting this first stage of painting. This is airbrush thinner. It's obviously used for Vallejo or almost any single paint. Um, normally with cheaper acrylics, you can just use water, but I'm gonna be using the actual airbrush thinner for these more expensive paints. Um, this obviously gives the uh, paint less of a solid consistency and more of a consistency of water, not fully, but close. Um, so it basically streams out of the airbrush really nicely. So I have that here and then gloss varnish. This will be for the armor pieces like the best car plates and the shoulder pieces. This will obviously just getting, we'll be getting a matte spray finish that's over there. Um, just again, to protect the paint and make it look matte where this is getting the glossy varnish to protect it and make it look shiny like it's real steel. Um, these are the other colors I'll be using on this project. All these are just leftover Vallejo paints that I have just in case I need them, but I don't think I will. Um, they're also all the Vallejo paints I have in my collection. But anyway, so um, here is the flat brown and leather brown. Um, both of these may be used for this leather uh, belt. I don't know yet, because I actually kind of like this color on it. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna go over it or not. I'm really trying to decide. I think I won't. I think I'm not gonna use it, and I'm just gonna paint more details and like little shiny bits on it um, and use it as this color, because it actually works pretty well, this color. Um, next we have gold. This is just for some accent pieces on, you know, like for example, he's got some tools in his calf that I'm, or on his shin I'm gonna try to use and a couple things on his uh, Vanguard wrist pieces that I'm gonna try to detail. And this, this lemon yellow seems kind of out of place, but there's actually one piece on his wrist. Um, it might be on this one possibly or the other one where it's like a little, no, it's not on this one, but there's a little screen. Um, and in the artwork, it's painted like a bright yellow, like it's on. And so I'm just gonna try to mimic that with this and like make it appear like it's glowing. We'll see if I use this exact color or one of those, but I'm gonna try to do something with this. Now, switching over to, uh-oh, let's go fix that. There we go. No, no, okay. That works. Switching over to the pieces we're not painting right now. We have our decals. Obviously these will be going on after. There's not much we're gonna be using, but there is the FET kind of crest looking uh, piece right there, which is on the artwork. So I will be using that. Here's the visor. Um, again, I don't know if I'm gonna be repainting this or not, but I have it over here because it, it doesn't need much to it. The shoes I'm keeping the stock color after reviewing the artwork, it actually looks pretty good like this. And I don't wanna mess them up, especially with the joints. And I mean, you know, you barely see the shoes anyway. I think these are gonna work fine. Um, next are the hands. Um, so the hands are getting, I just want to do separate by themselves, um, you know, mask them off and just do them in one session to all together because they're all going to have basically the same color, a black flat base coat and then silver on these little pouches, which are supposed to be in the artwork best car, little hand plates, but I definitely have nothing that can get that small of a print. I tried it. Trust me, it doesn't work. So I'm just going to hit them with silver and hopefully it'll kind of look good in the, in the final product. So I'm doing all the hands separate. Next is this cape piece. Um, I'm actually making a cape out of cloth goods. So if that doesn't work, I will come back and paint this the dark scarlet maroon color that it needs to be. But for now, I'm not gonna be painting it and it just is gonna be like an extra piece. So I'm holding onto it there. Next we have is two extra guns that aren't a part of the artwork that I thought looked cool. I'm debating, I'll probably just hand paint these a little bit and not airbrush them, just some details, dry brushing and stuff. And then we have a strap for his sword. Um, I doubt I'm going to paint this, but you never know. Um, because it's actually a decent, you know, tannish color that would probably look good. So we will see. Um, 
anyway guys so that is all where I am at in this stage. Um, I'm sorry I didn't start filming this video earlier. Obviously you already got the explanation of how I came up with this idea. You saw the artwork, you saw, um, you know, I, my explanation of kind of like how I began and how I got to this point, but I'm sorry you didn't get to see it. Um, again, very simple steps. Basically all I've done so far is build the model kit, um, assemble all the parts into like this area, get the paints ready. And then the five pieces are like the only thing I've actually done fully um, and completed that's like serious work. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Just semi-built the model kit. So I'll pick up um, when everything's masked and ready for paint. Sorry, we got some stuff going on upstairs if you can't tell. But I'll pick up when everything is masked and ready for paint. Obviously, we're going to be doing it in sections and we're going to be doing it with the airbrush. I'm debating right now. Um, I have this surface primer, primer that's really easy to apply and doesn't need any thinning. I think I'm gonna use it instead of a spray paint because, oh my God, that's so obnoxious. <laughs> the only spray paint I have that's a primer is the filler primer, and that's mainly used for sanding and it's not gonna really look good with a lot of these model kit parts. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing, obviously washing this all with soap and water, masking, and I think I'm gonna hit it with the black surface primer, um, recommended to me by Action Figure Toronto. Shout out to him, he does awesome customs. So I'll pick up when we're kind of getting into the painting area. Hey guys, we're over here with day two. Um, again, I really wish I could make this really cool video and in depth, but because I didn't think of doing it before I started the custom, there's a lot of parts missing. So I'm just going with an easy way to shoot it on my phone so you guys at least get what's going on. So this is day two of painting. Um, yesterday was the first day. The morning I spent dremeling and sanding and heating up and uh, washing and masking. So I did a majority of that yesterday and then started on painting, which I will go over in a second. This is what we have essentially left for the most part to do, completely to do. So I'll walk you through what we're gonna be doing for each of these. Um, actually, I'll walk you through what we did first and then I'll come back to this. So let's go over to the painting area. Um, I can go over also my workstation real quick for you guys who don't know. But here it is. This is our uh, our painting from yesterday and what's continuing. So as you can tell, um, all of these are alligator clipped on. Um, that's how you, it's best to hold them with silly putty, you know, masking the areas I don't want paint, mainly peg holes um, that will be going into the figure or anything I just don't want paint. So we got this great silver color. I'm actually really, 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 really happy with how this came out. Really happy with how this came out. Um, it looks good and light. It's, you know, it worked really well. Um, I mean, it really came out really well. Um, so yeah, so we have basically all the pieces to the armor that are to be in a steel color. So we have the uh, main armor pieces that are on the front of the armor, obviously, um, right there. And then we have his back plate there, um, a piece to his helmet, his Beskar thigh plates, um, one of his arm van bracers, another piece of the helmet, another piece of the helmet, another arm van bracer, the jet pack, and then his sword is up there as well because I wanted to hit that. Now, is this everything that's getting this best car color? No. However, it's a majority of the things that will retain the best car color. And what I mean by that, as I go over here now to um, these pieces. So for example, these yellow armor pieces you see here are going to be a red as a final product but underneath chipped away will be the beskar steel color um so this will get basically the exact same process that that armor has already gotten which is a black primer to go on first then a glossy black to make sure the silver when it's applied pops and then a silver coat on top of that now and then it will get the red on top of that and then i'll try to do a chipping effect to get that silver look now how I'm doing these pieces differ a little bit from this because they are retaining their silver color. However, comma, in the artwork, the Beskar steel on the pieces that are retaining that color is chipping away and there's a lighter steel underneath it. So I'm using this color, the Vallejo steel or silver as the lighter Beskar. This is like the lighter color. And then I'm gonna mix the uh, steel with the silver um, mainly more on the silver, so it's a little bit lighter, and I'm gonna coat them again with another color, and that will be the final color with some chipping on it. Um, and then obviously there'll be some hand-painted details, etc. but for the most part, that'll be the colors. Um, so there's one more to be done on all of these, and it's just a darker steel, um, but this is going to, this will not, the darker steel will not be going on. The armor pieces over here, the man, you know, these guards, 
these will just get the silver and then on top of that the red and will chip away underneath is the silver the silver is what's going to be chipping away underneath at every armor or like metal piece and then the pieces that retain like a more metallic color get the kind of um, steel color on top if that makes sense so what we have left we got to do another coat of a darker color on these pieces and then i'm going to probably do some hand painting or airbrushing to get like the because there's certain lines and red paint and stuff so those will all will not be done but they'll be closer to that product next we have um the hand this all over here will get its own separate kind of look see i'm not going to be painting this until my cloth stuff fails and i don't think it will hopefully this i may paint i talked about this yesterday we'll see it's the glossy visor but it looks pretty good the way it is the shoes i'm not painting the only thing over here that's really getting painted is maybe the guns i'll probably do this by hand but the only things that will probably be getting airbrushed are the hands these will probably be getting airbrushed but i'm doing those completely separate i may throw them in with the weapons over here i may not we'll see but what's next that's the question so i black primed these yesterday um i was a little impatient which i shouldn't have been i had just rinsed these in soap and water so they were cleaned but they were still a little wet and i didn't have a lot of time so there's the airbrush over there which i'll talk about my workstation in a second but if you leave paint in your airbrush for too long one it dries two it's bad for the airbrush it disrupts the flow it's it's, it's not good it's not a good thing and sure you can wait a while but then paint kind of starts to stick to the needle and it's just not a good thing you want to kind of clean it right after you're done using for the next paint uh, most of the time unless you can just buy any airbrush you want anytime you want so i was kind of in a rush i decided to try to dry it with a paper towel and go with it obviously you can tell there was probably some watermarks and spots that i you know i painted and it stuck to the water instead of the paint and obviously you can tell that it didn't fully get it i'm not too worried and here's why the reason i'm not too worried is because it's a black primer i'm gonna not prime this again because you don't need two coats of primer unless you're doing different colors for shading etc and I don't need shading because this is all going to be covered in armor anyway. This whole torso, it'll just be kind of showing. So the color this is in the artwork is black. I was saying that the suit itself is a dark blue and then this itself is black, like his uh, shirt where the best car attaches to. So I'm just going to hit this with a flat black base coat from Vallejo um, and call it good because that will get into the spots that the primer missed. And although it's not going to stick as well as it would to the primer, um, again, he's going to have armor all over him. You will barely be able to tell the difference if at all. So it's going to work. So that's what all of these pieces, again, all these pieces were wet. So as you can tell, all of them, um, you know, all of them kind of suffered from little drips and stuff like that. So that was just impatience. Very easy problem to fix. So these will be getting one flat back black base coat and they will be done. Over here, what we have left, we're going to black prime all of these pieces because these are like the bluish uh, under armor type of pieces, like his cloth underneath. Um, I'm doing a black base coat because I think it'll be best to uh, have more shadows and texture underneath that armor. Um, and if I did white, then it'd be way lighter than it has to be. So the black should work as a very good primer. Um, and then we'll do that as the base coat and we'll probably uh, give it a wash to accentuate the details and wrinkles and stuff like that once that's done So these all have to get black primed these all have to get black primed um, And then we will be going over each of these pieces with a gloss black as the base coat You know, this is getting the blue base coat. This is getting the gloss black base coat for the chrome Obviously, then they'll be getting getting hit with the silver color and then we will be doing the airbrush probably of the red on these pieces and then after these are hit with the silver i will probably go and hand paint the rest of the details to get it kind of matching how i want it um so that will be next and then the last thing after the blasters and all that are done um that will have to be done is these pieces these are going to be white so they're going to be hit with a primer that's white and then just base coated white and that should be good i'm going to mask the inside of the visor etc so it looks good and yeah i mean that's pretty much it other than that obviously we get into the details which i haven't thought of yet um well i've thought of i just haven't got to it yet the details being you know little scratches and weathering and washes and dry brushing and just making sure everything pops um so like for example this belt I said that I don't think I'm going to paint this brown, um, give it, you know, another Vallejo paint, which I probably won't. I'll probably use it as is, but I'm going to add some silver buttons to each of these pouches. There's a little bit of silver right here that will go there. So this is getting paint, but it's hand painted. So that will be coming at the end. Not only that, all the hand painting that needs to be done and the decals, 
but I also have the cloth goods to do when this is all done. I'm choosing to do them last. I would normally probably like to do them first, but I didn't want to build the Boba Fett model kit because it was already parted out the way I wanted it to for painting. So I didn't want to build it, size everything for the cloth goods, and then basically deassemble it and then start painting. Versus, and not, I didn't want to use the Black Series Boba because there is a little bit of a scale difference there because it's Bandai Model Kit versus Black Series. So I could make a rope frame that works really well with the Black Series or Cape, and then it sucks for the Model Kit. So I decided to just put that off till the end, and worst case scenario, he doesn't look good in the cloth, or I can't do the cloth goods, he'll look good anyways. That's why I'm doing it last. All right, guys, a little update. Um, the day has progressed and I've not gotten much farther than I already was, but I will go over what I've done. So first and foremost, um, obviously I got a late start at a haircut I noticed if I was doing, um, and then I ran into a hiccup. So I don't remember what I was saying last time I was on here about my next step. I think it was that I was doing a darker color on this uh, steel color. Well, the darker color didn't show up at all. I mixed it even with a little bit of black and just, it, I don't know why it wasn't showing up for whatever reason. Um, I, I don't know why. So, it basically, even with the new color added, it still looks really bright. So, I ended up going back to the store to pick up a new paint. Um, I grabbed two, this is the better one, I believe, Oily Steel. Um, this definitely matches the artwork more and should be a darker tone significantly darker than the bright steel color um, on this thing So I'm hoping that this gets the finish I want if it doesn't you know not the end of the world I'm gonna try it probably on like the dome piece of the helmet or something first just in case it doesn't work So I had to go to the store I had to fix that because I had painted basically all these with that paint and then after letting it dry and looking at it, there was basically no difference at all. I mean, literally, there's, there's no difference whatsoever. This is the exact same color. So that was a bummer. Now, what else I was able to do, and again, you also have to wait for things to dry. Um, paint to dry takes a while to make sure it's fully dry. Secondly, you also have to, I rinse my stuff in soap and water, so that way it gets all the dust and all the grime off it so it's ready to be painted after obviously a little bit of sanding. And so that takes a while to dry too. I just set them to dry here. So you also have to wait for that in between. Obviously I take breaks, eat, etc. So the next thing I was able to do is I finished completely the torso. This is sealed as well. So, I mean, this is fully, 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 fully finished. Um, yeah, it's like, it's completely sealed. Looks good. I'm super, super happy, uh, happy with how it turned out. It's a just, you know, it's a good color. Um, again, this is just the undershirt to the armor. So there's nothing gonna, you know, you're not gonna, you're gonna barely see it, but it looks good for what it is. And then the shoulder pieces, I won't show both. I, you know, they're both the exact same thing, but I finished these as well, sealed them. Those look good. Then I finished the neck and I was going to seal it, but then I took a real close look at the artwork just to make sure I was doing the right colors for all these pieces. And I noticed on the, like a more in-depth uh, photo of it on like, another part of that artwork showed that the neck was in fact a blue, the same as the torso. So I decided to leave this. So this has been black primed and black base coated. And so it'll be get, then be getting this blue next. So that's the progress we've made. Not a ton, but decently. Now what we're about to embark on is definitely a step in a pretty big direction. Um, here, we, here we go. This is pretty crazy right here. Um, this is all about to be black primed with this uh, Stein Verez uh, black primer recommended to me from um, Action Figure Toronto, shout out to him. Really easy to apply, doesn't need any thinning. You just put it in your airbrush and go to work. Um, so all of this will be getting black primed. Now the things that won't be the same color, all of this is getting black primed. All of it will be getting um, then after the black prime, a blue base coat of that like light blue over there and then a black wash over that. I will hand paint slash mask this green armor and just do it like a light steel silver color of this, um, not to probably hand paint it so I don't waste, you know, cleaning the airbrush and everything. So that will be a little bit different. I'm masking that, but everything else will be blue here. And then the armor over here is getting the black primer that I'm doing to all this. Then I'm taking it out because it's gonna get a glossy black after that. And then the silver and then the red on top. So the armor's just in here to kind of you know, knock a bird with a stone here, or kill two birds with one stone, I guess that's the quote, and uh, and get all of it primed all at once. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. 
Again, so the surface primer is great. Um, that's what I used on the silver and it worked really well. Um, had a good surface to adhere to. So that's what we're doing. All these pieces have been uh, soapy water treatment, you know, cleaned and then they were left a while. I'm masking them with Silly Putty um, for the most part, just the joints That's really and the holes on them. Um, that's really all I care about. And yeah, so I'm super stoked. Um, this should be pretty cool and I'm about to get into it. So I will show you guys probably the after results, hopefully soon. I gave everything in here a black primer coat and then I painted it all this uh, navy blue type of look which I am so 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 stoked on how it came out this is exactly like the artwork I was worried I was gonna have to combine some black luckily I went with my instincts and felt that the black uh, base coat underneath would be enough and thank god it was um, or thank god I went with those instincts because I mean take a look at that color it's perfect it's definitely subtle um, I may I'll probably give one piece of black wash and see how it comes out and if it comes out really well I'll do it to all of them um, just to kind of accentuate the shadows and the contrast and the wrinkles and stuff but I mean I think it's already turning out really good um, so besides that all these pieces will have is a, maybe a black wash and then uh, they'll be sealed the only pieces that won't be sealed right away are um, I have to paint the joints for the elbows and knees to make sure it's, you know, when you bend it, you can see paint all through and it's not just empty paint there. And then I have to paint some detailed uh, tools on the shin pieces because they're sculpted in. But other than that, everything else can get sealed. So that will be uh, probably tomorrow's project. Um, tonight, I'm going to let these dry overnight. That's the goal here. Um, I mean, again, they all look really good. And once these are done drying, I will, I'll probably dr take these off in like an hour or two, um, set them here on the mat, then take the chrome pieces back. And I'm gonna hit those with that new chrome color I got, the um, gun, it's something, it's an oiled steel or something. Then those will be the proper color and then I'll rest for the night and then I'll get up tomorrow and I'll start work again. Um, tomorrow's work after, of course, we do the chrome tonight would be to finish these pieces, do the white on this, and then start working on the red detail, oh, like the red details really for these pieces here. Tomorrow we'll be gloss blacking these, silvering these, and then going over with red and doing the chipping effect. These pieces are just gonna be hand painted for their chipping effect and stuff, so those don't even need an airbrush anymore after they get this color. This will be two coats of white, the primer and the base coat of white. Then again, these just have, um, these are done painting with an airbrush. I just have to black wash and then seal um, besides the shin pieces. So yeah, so I'm gonna go take a break, um, relax. I've been down here for hours now. So I'm gonna go take a break and do that, but I'm very, very excited with how it's coming out so far and can't wait to continue. So guys, we got an update for you here. Um, made quite a bit of progress, I think, since the last video, although I cannot be too sure. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at stuff right now. Okay, these actually are sealed here. Um, so, progress, yes, I made progress. Um, let me walk you through all the progress I made. So, um, I think, I don't know if I showed you the blue uh, coat that I did on top of that black primer for the cloth, but here it is, um, it's full glory. I then proceeded to black wash it directly after. So that's why it's all shaded and everything. Um, so it looks really good. I'm super, super stoked about it. So this, everything you see in this section right here is gonna be finished tonight. I am going out in just a little bit to seal all these um, and they'll be done. The pro like for the project, they will be done. I'm super, super happy that they're gonna be done. Now, everything you see on the mat, everything you see over here is already completed. It's done. I'm considering doing a leather on the shoes instead of this color, but again, you don't see the shoes, so I might just not do it. Now, everything you see over here, on the right side needs to be hand painted, on the left side still needs to be airbrushed. So we have the Beskar pieces. Um, I painted them their true color, which is that uh, darker like gray that I like um, versus the silver. I'll show you a quick comparison real quick, just so you kind of know the difference. Uh, let's do these pieces here. Mm, you can't tell, okay. Uh, let's do the van braces. Can you tell there? You can't tell on camera. Barely tell in person. It's astounding. You can probably tell on the top of the helmet a little bit. No, okay. Well, they're different colors. Um, in person, it's a lot more easier to see, but that's a darker gray. Um, it works. But I looked at the reference image a little bit more, and the jetpack seemed to be a lighter uh, silver. So I'm just kind of keeping this as silver, and I'll hand paint tomorrow. So 
everything over here needs to be hand painted um it's basically the general story here um you know little fine details little fixers stuff like that that all needs to happen here um again the progress i've made is black washing all the blue parts and then re-upping these uh new silver color on all these silver stuff i believe that's everything i've done pretty much so far um and then over here on the left is everything that needs to be airbrushed we have the white primer that needs to hit these two and then that white uh base coat and just basically the final coat for these two we have a black primer that has to hit all of these pieces kind of here and then a gloss black that has to hit the armor pieces over here and the weapons and then silver that has to hit the weapons and the armor pieces and then the weapons are done they're ready to be hand painted um, again after the white that's a able to be finished tonight probably and then the armor pieces need a red on top and i'm debating whether to do a hand painted red which i probably won't i'll probably airbrush the red and then do hand painted silver scratches on it so anyway if i want to airbrush i my goal was to get all the airbrushing done tonight that's what i really wanted to do but i don't know if that's going to get done um i think aiming for friday is the completion date of this project it's probably the safest move um that way i'm not rushing i'm not messing anything up i'm not kind of you know hurting myself by just staying down here because again i've been down here for hours all day basically today waiting for stuff to dry um because again i get messy i'm wearing apron mask etc it's not easy for me to you know get out all of that off and go upstairs and and stuff like that and so it's just easy to stay down here i don't want my airbrush to dry with the paint in it so constantly moving constantly changing parts over to here to there and stuff like that so um it takes a lot of time and I'm thinking I'm going to take a break for the night and be done once I do the white coats for this. If I can finish the white, the primer and that for this piece, I will be done. I will continue airbrushing tomorrow and finish up airbrushing and then probably start on the hand painting a little bit and then I will continue hand painting Friday and fit, wrap the project Friday. That's the goal is to be done by Friday. That way I don't stress, I don't try to, because again, I was trying to get done by tomorrow because if I finish airbrushing tonight everything, then it's pretty easy to just then do the hand painting tomorrow and finish that and seal everything and be done with the project. But I'm also forgetting I have the fabric. And so working another day into it where I'm not rushing is gonna be very helpful. So right now it's Wednesday. I'm hoping to get it done by Friday. I'm gonna finish airbrushing these parts tonight and get that done. And then um, tomorrow we will work on getting the weapons and uh, van bracers, I mean the, the um, knee pads and shoulder pads up there. We'll get those done tomorrow and then we'll start on probably hand painting some of the details on probably the leather and jetpack because those are the two i wanted and the actually probably everything we're going to probably experiment with everything why are these two pieces over here why do these need to be hand painted oh because they're the shin pieces also i'm messing up and I, i'm getting like some of the silver dust from the silver pieces that i move and stuff onto these so i either need to hit them with uh re-upping i think i need to just re-up the blue paint um, and hopefully that'll go away. So that kind of sucks. But um, I didn't get it on too many pieces, I believe. This has a little bit on it um, in trace amounts. It's hard to see, but it's not impossible to see. Luckily, that's where the best car plates go. I'm actually kind of excited. I want to see real quick um, how this fits. So there's no way to show you guys. I'll just check it out and then I'll give you an update later. Okay guys, our progress update right before I'm done for the night. It's about 8.30, um, I'm kind of shutting myself down because I feel like I could be down here till midnight working on this because it's kind of addicting because I love seeing the results. But I know I need breaks, I know I need rest, and most importantly, I know I need to pace myself. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm a little sad, I'm missing out on the grind contest because I'm working on this custom. And although, you know, I could technically clear this area and try to throw up a photo, I don't have that motivation as I do for this. Um, so that's why I'm also hoping to complete this custom by the uh, Friday because today's the 30th, tomorrow I think it's the first, thir uh, which is Thursday, and then Friday's the second, which gives me two days to enter, um, well, two to three days, or two to three days, depending on what time I finish Friday, to enter uh, summer shots for ACBA. Because again, ACBA is something I do that I love. It's definitely, out of customizing, out of dial work, out of anything related to this hobby, I do shooting photos the most by far. So I would love to uh, participate in summer shots, but this kind of took the four, uh, you know, my four front of my uh, mind and, and creative passion. And that's why I'm trying to finish it. Um, so anyway, so that's why um, 
I kind of wanted to explain that. Now, getting into uh, what we did today and what we are going to do tomorrow. So, I believe last time I checked up on you guys um, was in a very similar circumstance as this, but I'll go over everything we did today, just kind of as a recap in case you skip through some of the parts. Um, so I see I finished and sealed the pieces to uh, this torso here of uh, I mean the crimson mando I guess we'll say um, there you go gotta make sure he has no glitter on him um, I mean this is this is the most built he has so far because all these pieces are finished and um, and uh, sealed looking really cool um, obviously the paint you're missing there is you're not gonna be able to see because there's gonna be the back plate which is right here and then it's gonna be the jet pack so both will cover this completely so I'm pretty happy with the way this came out again um, I don't know if I fully explained the reason the, why the joints are gray but basically the uh, the wrist like van van braces will cover the bottom ones the top ones the paint keeps sc scratching off I consulted a couple friends I think I'm just gonna leave it for my first custom I don't think it's a huge deal so that's these pieces next we have the legs that are finished um, these look good are built in three pieces right now which is the knee piece the thigh and then the upper thigh that connects um, this looks good nope not going to touch wood but no paint is scratched yet it's looking really good i love the shading on the blue i love how the blue came out it looks really cool both legs are done that way and then we have our uh, best car plates these are 3d printed by me obviously not perfect you can still see some lines but they're definitely going to work for under the tunic um the main thing that oh it's super loud upstairs sorry if you heard that um uh, my dad's watching tv <laughs> um anyway but one thing that needs to happen to these is they gotta get hit with a gloss varnish that's right there that will be hitting all the armor pieces. Um, so that will make these a lot shinier and more reflective and will hopefully match the rest of the armor. So that will be happening. Now, taking a look at what's on the table over here. We'll talk about these real quick. Um, so I think I might've talked to you guys about how the left side is divvied up in terms of airbrush. The right side is hand paint. So what we finished tonight, obviously you can tell, is a part of the helmet. Um, we did the white. I said I was going to do this, a white primer coat and a white base coat. I did. It looks really good. I put them together and I put the visor now in there. So all that's left are these three chrome pieces of the helmet. Um, I just got to do some hand painting tomorrow on those with some red lines. And then the helmet can be assembled. There's also the little detailed pieces that actually have to go in here as well, so it's not fully done, but it's definitely getting there. I'm super excited to see what happens next. Um, and these will be painted with the blasters and guns tomorrow. Um, so next, um, so I finished that. And then again, I think I already talked about how I did these, uh, the silver color for like the armor pieces. It came out pretty good. I really like um, this new color that I did. We obviously have the blue torso here that looks good. I have to hit this with some hand painted chrome to silver tomorrow. Um, again, everything here is hand painted, not much has changed. I did a black wash over this sword, so the details are coming out. That actually turned out way better than I thought it would. Let's see if you guys can see that, it looks pretty cool. Um, so that, I will also be hand painting the handle of that tomorrow. And then, what else was I gonna talk about here real quick? Obviously hand painting the belt and stuff. I don't think anything else has really changed here besides um, what it was. And then again, over here, airbrushing all of this. Um, because this needs a black base primer coat and then it needs to be hit because that's what these have and then it needs to be hit with gloss black which this will also get and then a silver which i'm debating if this is going to get or not because i'm thinking i'm just going to paint over the red to get the chipping effect instead of under it because it's harder to get that chipping effect so i think i'm just going to end up going with um with painting over so i'll probably just do this red this chrome but i did forget these also need a black primer coat tomorrow because I forgot about the hands completely because they were over there. So this is actually also gonna go over here for tomorrow's black prime coat. Then the uh, the section of the hand um, right here where there's wrinkles is gonna get probably just silver hand painted or gloss black then silver hand painted. Um, I could mask the rest of it, we'll see. But tomorrow, again, like I was saying, the goal of tomorrow is to finish airbrushing all this, which can easily happen. In fact, I can probably finish it in the morning before 10, hopefully, all of that, and then hand paint the rest of the day, hopefully finish. I don't know if I will hopefully finish. Um, and then Friday, finish whatever I didn't finish hand painting and do the cloth goods. And the figure should be done. So super excited. I'll uh, fill you guys in tomorrow. See you later. 
All right, guys, this may be my first progress video today, and it is a completion video for the figure itself. Now, do I still have cloth goods to do tomorrow? Yes, but am I done with the figure's painting process? Completely. I'll go over the pieces real quick. Um, I don't want to touch them too much because, you know, just sometimes I have sparkly hands from doing the silver pieces. So some pieces were changed, some pieces weren't. We got the two white lines going down here. They're very messy in the art. They got scratches, so that actually learned. Uh, turned out good. The red on the center looks pretty good. The silver on the back of the hands and the hands being black washed or uh, black coated look really good in, in my opinion. Um, the calves have the leather kind of pocket with the silver hanging out. Um, when those are a little shinier, when they're sealed, that'll look good. Uh, this didn't do much, but just a little bit of silver. Very uh, messy because it's going to have a cloth belt and skirt over it. Um, a belt and then a skirt over it. I just cleaned up some of the white, um, nothing major here, and then gave it a little bit of a black wash. I gave everything a black wash pretty much. Uh, so you got the belt, which is completely changed colors to a darker color due to uh, two washes. I also detailed it with some silver, so that looks pretty good. Um, pretty, pretty stoked about how that turned out. You got the top of the helmet as well as other parts of the helmet with the red lines that were needed. Um, it was pretty decent. This side's not great. I might touch that up tomorrow before I seal, we'll see. This is just silver, that looks fine. Uh, we got the Van Brace one, looking pretty good with the details. Um, some white paint, some gold, some red, and then some silver that's uh, black washed to get all the details. Um, mm, here's uh, the front of the helmet with the red lines looking pretty good for the most part. And then we got, what's the other Van Brace? I think it's over here, the other Van Brace, with the glossy black tube going up, looks pretty decent. Again, the white is, is all by design. All of this is basically off the artwork. Uh, the red shoulder pads with some chips in them. Obviously, you can see the yellow on the side. Those look decent, um, pretty good for the most part. You got the calf or the knee braces, way dirtier, obviously, because it's going to be closer to the mud. Those look pretty good, chipped. You got the jet pack, one of my favorite things I did. Um, I think it looks pretty decent um, for sure. Some good details on it and everything, so that looks pretty good. Got the weapons, we got the big ass rifle, we got the sword here, we got the two pistols looking decent. Um, what else am I forgetting? I think that might've been everything actually. Um, obviously the leg, the thigh pieces, which I did. So yeah, so, um, it's been quite a bit, um, hand painting all these and finishing airbrushing all the pieces I hadn't today. It took a lot of time, took a lot of effort. I ended up having to clean my airbrush, um, completely, like literally strip it from completely take it apart and like deep clean it because of how much I was using it constantly and not giving it the full treatment. So it's a good thing I was able to do that, figure out how to do that so I know how to do it for the future. And yeah, so the things over on this side need to be um, coated with the gloss varnish so they're all shiny because I want the leather to be shiny because it's leather. I want the, uh, the armor to be shiny because it's armor. That includes basically every single piece, including the weapons in this area, anything metallic. This can be fine without it because it's just a white color and it kind of uh, like breaks up the metallic feel. Um, I want these little pockets, so I'll probably silly put around the pockets. I want those to be shiny because they're leather, but the cloth not to. And then these are, I think, fine the way they are. I'll probably hit them with some Mod Podge to seal them, so it'll be a little shiny, but not too much. And then everything else, um, cloth-wise, it's over there. Over here is just getting the same um, clear coat spray that I've been doing that's matte um, and won't be shiny at all. So we'll see it. I'm gonna put it all together tomorrow. After so tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Um, obviously when I get up and, and start doing it, I'm going to gloss varnish everything and matte spray and Mod Podge anything I hadn't done. So it'll all be done. And then I will let it dry for a little while. Make sure my hands are completely washed very thoroughly. So there's no, you know, silver residue. I'm not messing up anything. I will assemble the figure completely. And then once that's done, um, besides the belt, I won't attach the belt permanently. I won't like attach this on just because I'm gonna attach the skirts under the backside of it. So I want it loose so I can do that and then put it on. So that's the only thing that won't be fully on, although I'll have it on for a test fit. Then the skirts will go on to the belt for him and then the cape will be done and the figure will be done. So um, things that went wrong in this project or that I'm not a huge fan of, um, I'll talk about because obviously not everything's gonna go perfectly. The weapons, I don't know, something's a little off about them. I might need to hit them with a different colored uh, tone tomorrow because I'm just not a huge fan of this blue that the artwork had like realized. I just don't think it looks that good. The sword is fine. I like the sword, the blue and the, the, the silver 
look good. Um, this yellow for the Van Brace screen um, that's on here that's glowing. I don't know if I liked how that came out or not. I'm still debating that. I like how this Van Brace came out, but I don't love how some of the white came out on the bottom. I don't know, it looks a little weird, even though that's what the design has. Um, the white lines actually look good. I'm pretty happy with those. Um, the top of the helmet is probably my biggest um, pet peeve slash annoyance. Um, I don't like how this side looks. I don't really like how the lines look too much. And I don't, I mean, I don't like really any of this besides the silver. Um, that's the only good thing about it. So we'll see what it looks like when it's put on. I'll probably, um, I won't seal this until I put the helmet together. And then if it looks good, I'll take it off and I'll seal it. If not, I'll readjust it. I'm definitely gonna be readjusting this because you can see like fingerprint lines and like just some weird crap in there that I don't want seen. So I'm probably gonna hit this again tomorrow with a different, uh, the reason why it like looks a little weird is because I was trying to fix up the red line to a little splotchy and I accidentally used the wrong silver. I used the really light silver. So I ended up having to rub it off with a paper towel. And so you get this weird look right here. So I'll probably try to fix this tomorrow um, decently and hopefully it'll look decent. So um, that's the main thing that I'm really peeved about and I don't know if it'll come out good or not. But everything else I'm actually pretty happy about. This is a, the lines on the lower helmet are a little skinny from the artwork, but I think it looks fine the way it is. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. So I'm gonna go get some rest. I have something 3D printing right now, which is kind of a surprise, pretty cool. Um, and then tomorrow again, we're sealing, um, touching up paint that might have, you know, not be perfect like the way I want it. And then we're doing the cloth and it'll be done. Um, it'll definitely be done by tomorrow. There's no question about that. So I'm super, super stoked. I was able to complete it on time. Um, it took a ton of time today to, to do all this and I was busy doing other stuff as well. I did the podcast and, and, and some other stuff came up, but I'm super, super stoked. I'm super excited to see what else happens. Um, with this project and, and just how it looks finalized. Um, super, super, super pumped. I think this will be a really cool thing that I've done and can add to my tool list of like things I'm good at. So I'll keep you guys updated tomorrow morning. Um, after I gloss varnish these, I'll probably I'll probably show the results and the mod. I'll probably show it when it's all sealed and um, right before I put it together and then I'll show it when it's put together and then I'll show the process of me probably doing the fabric because I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'll keep, stay tuned. Here it is, guys. Okay, this morning, although I had a very, uh, I guess, low work ethic, I didn't want to do this right away. Um, I was able to seal every single thing you see here. Every single part of the project is complete, but the fabric and this time to put it together. Um, just talking about what I did. So for the armor pieces, like the shoulders and, and you know, van bracers and stuff i did a gloss varnish of vallejo um that they make it's very nice it, it i can definitely feel a protective surface here it's smooth worked uh, pretty well i think so i did that and then for the more matted parts so for example um i mean it still looks like i did a goddamn gloss varnish on here but i did modge podge um the the leather pocket i actually did a gloss varnish which i'm kind of regretting because it looks way too shiny but it's okay um, but for everything else, I just mod did Mod Podge to seal it. Um, the leather, I did Mod Podge. I did a matte Mod Podge and I brushed it on. But as you can obviously tell, even the matte Mod Podge comes out glossy. So you really got to be careful about how you use it. But luckily, the pieces I chose to Mod Podge look good, kind of glossy, um, and are supposed to. So, I mean, this as well, which kind of is a little shiny, but a little not, which worked out pretty well. Um, and again, the shins are down further and, and can be shiny. So anyway, that was pretty much everything. And now it's time to assemble it. And I will be filming my reaction as I assemble it, which I'm super stoked about. This is as far as I've gone. And this was just from doing, like I had this as a dry fit of like how it looked um, days ago. And then I started, I put this metal thing on the top, but then I realized I wanted to wait and do the rest of it as well. So that's what we're doing. The only thing we're not gonna get done quite yet, which I'm gonna do straight after this, is probably get the thigh, the best car thigh pieces on, and then I will do the fabric after. So it'll be a rough, kind of a rough guesstimate of what it looks like without the thigh pieces until we get those on. So let's do this. All right, guys. About to get into it. I just, uh, some hand sanitizer on my hands, make sure they're looking fine. Won't leave any residue of any kind. Man, this was a project and a half. I don't even have the words to describe how crazy this project was. I am so excited to see it through. My hands feel dry, let's get into it. Um, there'll be more content after this. I will be doing the cloth parts and then I will be doing 
I will be doing uh, the kind of final review of the project. So here we go. Um, start by putting together the waist to make sure this fits well. There we go. Okay, looks good. <laughs> there we go. Now we got the armor pieces, which is one of my most anticipated things to put on, which I'm very excited about. So we're gonna do that right now. go. It's crazy. The last chest plate piece is going on right now. Wait, just a little bit of hair. Get out of there. Get out of there. Yeah, come on. There we go. Chest plate is complete. We got the two white lines. Looks pretty sick so far. I'm definitely excited. Um, this is really cool. I'm, I'm definitely excited. So next I want to build the helmet. The helmet is one of my most anticipated things to see how it looks because I don't know if I'm going to love it or hate it. So we are going to build that right now. That's not good. It's a really tight fit over here for this piece. Um, which it has been in the past before as well. So it sucks. I had a feeling this was probably going to happen because, again, this piece is like super hard to get just right, the angle of and everything. So, and it has paint on it. So, yeah, this might take a lot of finessing and, and hard work to get in there, but I think you can do it. Plus, it also broke off and I had to super glue it back on. And doing that, I think, messed up the angle a little bit. So, this could actually be like incredibly difficult, as a matter of fact. All right, we're going to come back to that. <laughs> this on there. There we go. No, I didn't mess it up. I did it the right way, didn't I? Okay, no, I did it the right way. Good. Keep worrying, I'm like leaving residue. Where is the, there we go. Okay. This goes like underneath this. Fuck you. Yep. Paint definitely affects how snugly pieces fit in with each other, I will say. So, it's kind of a bummer. God, this is hard. Okay, we got that side in. This side in as good as it can be. Okay, doesn't look terrible. It's a good thing. <laughs> um, is it this, wait, is this piece? Yeah, this piece goes here. Okay, let's put that in there. My heart, dude. I have actually like major anxiety right now because I feel like something's gonna mess up and be. Oh shit! Well, something broke. <laughs> We're gonna have to fix right now. Um, these scissors just to move it back. Shit. Okay. Well, that happened. Uh, we broke a piece, but it's okay. It'll actually allow us to put it in a lot easier now if it's like this. Damn. That worked. Now all we have to do is slip it like this. <gasps> kind of worked out for the better, I think. Kind of is the key word there. Okay, still really difficult to get in for whatever reason, so. It's just all the paint, I think, is affecting how easily it like fits into place. right there just push up a little bit I almost have it it's like really like on the cusp hmm. I may need a hammer ladies and gentlemen but it is it is pretty much there I mean if you yeah that's there that's there that's there okay we got this piece here well, how does that work one step at a time Oh wait, oh shit, oh shit, wrong order. Yeah, this goes in, this goes in here like this, yes. 
and then this goes on it, yeah, to cover it, yeah, yeah. There we go. Not bad. Could use a little bit of hot water treatment to straighten that out, but not bad. Okay, it's time for the visor, the most important fuck. Pardon my language. Put a white paint on the top I wasn't seeing. Hope that doesn't affect this at all. Okay. Shit. I really hope this white paint doesn't like no longer work after this or like attaches to this or some shit. Hold on. Okay, it's done. Here is the helmet fully assembled. I actually kind of dig how it looks. It did a pretty decent job. Let's get it on the neck. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. There we go. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm getting hyped now. <laughs> damn. I didn't do bad. That's what I figured out. God damn. There's a ton of paint on my nails and stuff. I gotta get off to make sure. Just from pushing everything in on the helmet because it was such a tight fit. More hand sanitizer. I was probably making some really weird faces right there while I was trying to make sure the whole hand sanitizer was on my hand. Okay, let's remove this for right now. Wow. I don't normally toot my own horn, but I'm gonna toot it because it looks fucking super fucking cool. <laughs> Pardon my language again, but I'm really hyped right now. Um, okay. For the first time in a while, here, hold on. Let me grab this exacto and mechanical pencil over here so I can really get into the nitty gritty on this. And because uh, I have only two pieces left, but the, the, the exacto and the pencil are nice for removing masks. Um, but they're also nice for chipping away paint that's not supposed to be where it's supposed to be or, or stuff like that. So that's why I have my nails for the mask. And I was using the scissors for the paint, so. Or just the other fan brace. Yeah. Should be looking at the artwork so I get this right. I think I should. I'm gonna pause the video real quick just so I get this right. So guys, I took the liberty of putting on the uh, wristbands and the shoulder pads. It was just easier without the camera and being able to use both hands and, and everything. But we'll get back to the assembly. It's looking really cool. Okay guys, I am really hyped right now. This is looking really cool. So we're gonna build the legs separately and then attach it to the body once those are built. So we have, which knee pad is which? Crap, I might have to look at the model kit again and see which leg goes to, actually I think it's, Pretty simple. I think it's this one's right on. It's this. It's also good to be safe, so hold on. All right, guys, we figured it out. I'm building it right now, as you can tell. I am so excited with how good this looks. I mean, this is coming out better than. Oh wait, there we go. Wait, what? This is being weird. Oh, I just gotta make sure it's all the way in there. Is this the right foot? Yeah, it is. Okay. Just looked a little weird. Okay. There we go. There's that. Attach this here. Okay, that's not going in very easily. <laughs> okay, there we go. That actually did go in pretty easily. Once I figured that out, let's get the foot in on there. The only thing left will be um, the thigh pieces, and I'll just tease that real quick, and then we'll get into doing that. But it'll look something like that for the most part. So we'll see. I actually have to put the leg uh, knee braces on as well. There we go. So good. <laughs> I'm so excited right now, guys. It's like kind of crazy. 
because of how good this is look like I it actually came out just how I would, would want it look at that look at that guys come on okay let's move the arms up a little bit so we can do this without worrying okay one leg in Once I put the jetpack on, he's basically done. Something. Oh, and the belt. I gotta put the belt on. Wait, okay, hold on. Belt's looking really good. Let's get, we're gonna test out putting the weapons in here. That works. Looks good. This looks good. Go. Put the belt on here. Again, we're gonna have to do the cloth, so it's not complete, but it's getting there. The cloth will really sell the, the look of this a lot more than this is right now, I will say, but this isn't doing a bad job. I'm so excited. <laughs> and Avengers of shit. Hold on. This is taking way more effort than I thought it would to get this gem back in these holes. What the hell? There's no extra paint on him. Why is this not going in? I guess I didn't test fit it first. Jesus. Okay, I hope I'm not breaking or smudging any paint or doing anything to mess up the figure right now while I'm trying this. Okay, looks fine. So we're gonna put the figure down and we're gonna... I might need to sand these down because they have some excess plastic or something. I don't know why. Oh, I'm an idiot. These balls are... Oh, wait, what? What? I don't think that's how it's supposed to be, is it? Yeah, no. I got it. Okay, hold on. I, I understand. I understand. I understand, ladies and gentlemen. So, what happened was it looks like to me... Oh! Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I understand what's going on. Which I'll inform you about in one sec. Let me fix it real quick. I can. Shit. God damn it. Supposed to be like the grand unveiling. Fuck! I just broke a piece of it. God damn it. Fuck. I'm not super glue that. God damn it, dude. This is pissing me off. Because the back plate won't come off. It's been a little bitch. It should not be this hard to take off the back. Jesus. Okay, I got it off. Fuck. So what happened was the jetpack was attached to the pegs that are actually supposed to go in, uh, they're actually supposed to be in the, um, the back. And so the jetpack had those pegs on it and those pegs couldn't fit behind the armor because they're already supposed to be in the back, which I will do right now. Except actually, let me see the jetpack real quick and see which way these are supposed to go in. This? to super glue this real quick you know what guys i'm gonna now the back pegs are in it's great but we're gonna i'm going to go super glue this piece real quick so it's all put together and then i'll do the grand unveiling Alright guys, here we go, the finale of a very, very long, uh, tedious project that I could not be more happy with how it turned out and how the whole project went itself. Um, here is the finished Mandalorian. Um, as you can see, we made some changes, mainly the thigh armor here um, was changed quite a bit to... Uh, to downscale it because it looked really weird um, after showing it to some of my friends because it was so big. So I 3D printed and changed that a little bit. Um, I made the whole skirt out of some black fabric and some red paint and I just masked off the lines and everything that uh, 
that needed to be masked off. So I made the Kana, I believe is what it's called. Um, so I finished that and then I painted the cape. Um, I tried to make a cloth cape out of very similar fabric to the Kana, but it was horrible, horrible, went horribly. Um, I'll try to make it in the future again. I'm gonna retry it, but for now I'm just using the plastic cape it came with. Obviously painted the dark maroon color it needed to be. Everything else is fully complete. Um, the figure articulates perfectly. Everything is sealed um, with either gloss varnish, Mod Podge, or like a matte spray. Those are the three different sealers I used, obviously for three different types of pieces. I was so, so, so stoked. Um, I'm very, 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 very happy with how this came out. I gotta fix the belt. It's not fully clipped on. Um, that's a really easy fix. I'm gonna do that. I just have it loosely on there right now. Um, but I'm very, very, very happy with how he came out. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, I should have definitely recorded some of the airbrushing process um, for you guys so you know kind of how it's done um, because some people include it in their videos, some people don't. This is my first video back on YouTube, so I kind of didn't really think about recording it too much. But anyway, I will show a little tutorial on how you normally airbrush um, after this or probably before this maybe. I'm going to record it after this, but it might be before in the video. And then, yeah, this will be it. So again... Uh, here's some size comparisons and kind of just look comparisons next to some Mando counterparts. Um, here he is next to the SHF Mandalorian and the Black Series Boba Fett. Um, I think he looks actually really good. I like, I didn't think he'd be taller. I thought he'd be shorter, but he's actually taller than both of them. I really like the way he looks with Mando. Um, I like how his silver is a little bit lighter, but it's like, it's got paint on it. So it kind of adds to it. Um, both are pretty reflective. I like his size and bulk. I like the cloth goods aspect and I love the double kind of dual pistol holsters. I gotta heat those up and set those flush as well, but that will happen eventually. Um, I, just, I really, really am happy with how it came out. I think for my first custom I've ever done and kind of like this whole thing being a learning experience, I think I actually did a pretty good job. Um, and then here he is next to Black Series Boba Fett, which obviously this is the Boba Fett model kit. So it's on the same body, um, obviously with different things changed and, and moved around, etc. So. I'm pretty stoked with how this came out. I think I think the the weathering was the thing I was gonna be, I feared the most that would not look good. Um, and for some reason, I'm actually really happy with how it came out. I didn't have time nor the resources to do this liquid masking, liquid like masking technique people do for um, the chipping effect where they like add a little bit of liquid silicone or mask and then it dries and you peel it off and it adds a little chipped effect. So what I ended up doing was just painting the lighter silver on top of whatever it was so like as you can see here it's like on top but it kind of looks like it was scraped away in a way if that makes sense um and then i also took a knife to it in some spots so if we like zoom in here on the chest plate you can see i like knifed the areas that are weathered so it kind of actually looks like that weathering happened and were scratched off um kind of see it on the back a little bit too the jetpack yeah i am i am thrilled with how this came out um his name is Tad Ket. Uh, shout out to Ty, a friend of mine, um, and um, Brian Cap Lives, another friend, who kind of after I showed them yesterday, I basically talked to them about the backstory, and they kind of created it based on the colors he wears. So his name, we decided on Tad Ket as the name. Well, I technically decided, but they were just kind of pitching the ideas, and that's the name we're going with. But he's Tad Ket. He lost his family and loved one in a bombing of um, some city that he was a part of, um, not on Mandalore, but like a Mandalore sect, if that makes sense, like a part, like, you know what I mean. Um, anyway, and it like took place like during kind of the Clone Wars and Rise of the Empire-ish. Um, and he was like, again, like a probably late teenager at this time. Um, and so, he's fighting for justice he's trying to find the killers of his family um kind of stuff like that i need to solidify the story a little bit more because um it's very complicated from from what we've talked about but it's it's just super cool and i'm so excited to shoot him obviously that's like the main reason i have him customized is to shoot him and have like his own unique story as a character in the star wars universe um and again, I, I love the weapons I was able to give him, the sword, the rifle. Um, I'll, I'll show the rifle. I don't know where the sword is. I think it's over in the customization booth maybe area or something. I don't know, I'll find that in a second, but here's the rifle he uses. Um, it's kind of like a scope sniper, obviously completely customized by me with different scopes and stuff. Um, so this is his rifle. I don't know how he's gonna store it quite yet. Um, I haven't figured that part out 
just yet, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think it looks decent, just kind of something you'd find on a normal figure anyway. Handle's black because I was using it to clamp so I could paint, and then that way it slides in the hand really easily and the paint doesn't affect that. So yeah, so I'm pretty, pretty stoked with this. I think it came out good. The dual pistols look good. Um, I'm happy with every aspect of this figure. There's nothing I would change per se, or like that looks, there was before when the thighs were huge, I was like, oh, I wish I could reprint those thighs a little bit smaller. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think everything is like perfectly the way I'd want it. And I'm super happy with how it looks with other Mandalorians and I can't wait to shoot this more. So thank you guys for watching. I am going to announce right here, right now, I am back on YouTube. I'm going to be starting to do my traditional shooting figures episodes um, before I made the format change to vlogs, just because with my limited time with school um, and just, just summer and like me being busy, it's really hard to keep up with the vlog format because it takes hours of editing and time and, and really a lot of work. So I'm going to try to just do so I can get content out every day for people to watch a vlog, they, or not a vlog, a Shooting Fears episode every time I do a display. Um, they're quick, they're easy, and they're fun, hopefully for you guys as well as for me. So, super stoked about that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Please share this video. This is my first ever custom. I'm super stoked about it. I think it came out really well. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.